Hey, hey, my friends. So I wanted to come at you guys tonight with a little more info on your personality card types uh, and really wanting to talk about motivating and communicating with these four personality types a little bit more. Action. And I thought I would give some more uh, basic examples and the hows a little bit deeper than from what we talked about last night with recognizing the four different personality cards. Uh, because I know when I first started studying the personality types and I understood the basics of recognizing and seeing the personality types for who they were, I didn't really understand their practical application. Like, okay, that's great. A heart's motivated by helping people, but how do I actually communicate with a heart? How do I actually talk to them differently and how do I you know encourage them to take the action so what I would thought I would do is break down a few different examples and I thought I would talk to you as if you were how you could talk to your kids who might have the different personality types how you would motivate them and encourage them and how you can actually point out like your home-based business opportunity that you may want to recruit people into which I know so many have struggled with recruiting into their home-based business and I thought you know this is a great opportunity to talk about that as well so without any further rambling I want to get to, kind of to the point and go with this let's talk about the diamond first tonight the diamond is the partier. They are motivated by fun. They're motivated by having a great time. They're very socially oriented. They're relationship oriented. They're all over the place. They are just kind of, they're me. I mean, they're me. If you follow me long enough, you'll be like, yes, Megan, we know you are a diamond. You know, they're the sing song, silly people. Um, they're very big on words of affirmation and praise. They want to be recognized for what they're doing. They like to be in the spotlight, the center of attention. Again, I'm not gonna go through everything about each personality type. We really dove in pretty deep uh, last Thursday night, and the video is still available on the YouTube channel, and it's available here in our uh, Facebook group and at lifeaboverubies.com, so you can find it and be a part of it. But if you are a diamond, or you recognize a diamond personality type, and you want to motivate them, or you want to encourage them, or you want them to take action with something, you're gonna wanna do it by having fun. So for example, if you're trying to recruit a diamond into your home-based business, into your direct sales business, into whatever it is, or trying to hire one, you're going to want to spark their interest by encouraging the relationships that they can build, by the fun trips that they can earn, by the fact that they aren't sitting behind a desk, that they have the variety to set their own time schedule and their own timetable. They um, are their own boss in that, own set, in that sense, and that really motivates a diamond to want to take action and to be a part of something. They like to be included, okay? Diamonds really like to be included. So if you are explaining to your diamond your business opportunity, that's kind of where you're gonna wanna go with it. The fun of the uh, trips that they can earn, the fun of the extra money that they can have to play with and, and to go out and do other things. They are uh, crazy multitaskers and they can be all over the place. So sometimes you need to be a little bit more repetitive and ask them to repeat back what they heard. But in not, not in a demeaning way, like make sure that it's in a what did you get from this kind of way? They get bored really easily and they're off to the next thing. So you really have to keep a diamond on track and on task. With my diamond child, okay, it's constant active um, involvement, multitasking activity, they're mobile. They are silly. They like to laugh, they like to play games. So for a diamond child, you wanna give them opportunities to have fun in the mundane tasks. So what are ways that you can create an environment where cleaning up the room can become fun? Yeah, it may be singing the silly clean up, clean up everybody song that we heard in Barney for so many years. Um, but it can also be, you know, giving them that, that sense of how fast can you go? Can you be a race car announcer or a, a DJ that's, you know, beatboxing to the room getting cleaned up? And not that you always have the time to do that, but can you create those fun situations for your diamond child to excel and to embrace their personality type? 
it's amazing to me that you think all kids would want to be silly and have fun and be motivated by that, but there are truly kids that they don't they don't want to be silly. Like they like having their things in order. My Grady is very OCD. He's only two. But if I were to try to make cleaning up something silly, he has to organize his trucks by color, by size, by everything. And if I were to make it a funny thing for him, that would just like crush and destroy his personality. That would crush and destroy who God made him to be. So recognizing these things in our children as well as in our coworkers, uh, the people that we interact with, our friends, we can really learn how to motivate and encourage and build them up in the language that speaks to them. It doesn't mean become a chameleon. It doesn't mean that your personality changes. It's just learning the difference. Hey, everybody popping on. Thanks so much for popping in. Hey, Angela. Um, it's learning to communicate the to the different types, okay? It's learning to recognize who you are yourself. I know for a diamond, it can be really easy. They're they're kind of like liked by everybody. Then you know they're they're popular, they're they're out there, and sometimes people think sometimes a diamond will think if somebody doesn't like me, I'm going to die. Like, I am going to die if somebody has a critical thing to say about me or to pull me down. So you always want to be encouraging a diamond with the positive affirmations. And the things that diamonds need to recognize is you're not going to die if somebody doesn't like you. You are going to be okay if things can't be silly. You do need to work on being better on time. You do need to be working on, you know, these other things. And it's really important to recognize and, and understand that. And... Yeah, I, I feel like there was some other way. Well, what tends to happen a lot with the four personality types is that they do kind of sit in the corners of each other. So sort of the polar opposite of a diamond would be the club, okay? Diamonds and clubs tend to be like polar opposites of each other, which is kind of funny because then you also have the hearts and spades that are almost polar opposite of each other. And what happens with that a lot of times is that us diamonds are really drawn to the spades. We end up kind of getting into relationships and clicking with these opposites that are attracting. Even though, you know, we, we tend to like the people who are like us, we desire the things in opposite, in opposite quadrants, right? So many times what will happen with a diamond, they go after a spade who's actually a perfectionist. Spades want things perfect. They want things orderly, detailed, by the book totally opposite of what a diamond is. So what tends to happen when a diamond's in a relationship with a spade is they think, man, everybody likes me and I'm just not good enough for this spade. Why am I not good enough for this spade? And the spade has to learn to recognize how to build up this diamond and the diamond needs to recognize how to um, function with the spade's details and their way of doing things and functioning. So let's go on to the spade for a second since we're going to the polar opposite. They are excellent. Uh, this isn't the spade. This is the club. I don't know why I'm saying spade. I'm sorry. I meant club. The diamond is opposite of the club. Wow. I, I'm even holding the right card, but I'm saying the wrong thing. I'm sorry. Diamonds and clubs are opposite of each other because clubs are so detail-oriented. They are perfectionists. They are critical thinkers. They are analytical thinkers. They are time-focused. And they are the polar opposite of, of this. These guys are like best buddies and worst nightmares all at the same time. And like I said, sometimes the diamond will think, I'm just not good enough for this, for this um, club. I'm not a perfectionist enough. I'm too all over the place for this guy. I'm too much of a big thinker. And this one's like figuring out the tiny details and can't go on until it's perfect. They complement each other so well but they are so opposite. And recognizing that, you can help work through things better. It helps you understand how other people function. It's okay to be different. Understand your personality and how it functions with others. That's 100% the goal of this little series here. You, thank you, Angela, for pointing that out. So again, they're about analyzing. They're about consistency. They're problem solvers. They are researchers. So they are constantly trying to fix a diamond, okay? So recognize that. Find ways for them to solve problems. Nothing thrives a club child more than when you give them a problem, obviously within child range, that they can think about and solve and that you can praise them for how they solved it, okay? 
out even outside of like their schoolwork, but in school as well. I mean, they are just they thrive on research, they thrive on details, they thrive on organization and problem solving. You need to be very soft and clear when it comes to working with a club. So to motivate a club into your direct sales business or into your uh, your product idea, your service, you are going to want to give them places that back up all your facts. You need to be fact oriented. You need to be direct. They are going to be slow to make the decision versus the diamond that's going to jump right in on impulse and just be fun with it. And until they get bored with it, you got to keep them engaged with the diamond. The club is going to be a lot more um, thorough. They're going to be a lot more give it their all a lot more loyal because they're going to do their research and they really want things neat and tidy and they want things perfect okay so don't BS a club you do not want to BS a club you want to make sure that you are well prepared when you are communicating and motivating a club you want to be on time if you are not on time with a club they're gonna lose interest they feel like you don't respect them if you are not um, showing them respect for their contributions and for their detail orient organization, they're going to shut down and it's going to be harder for them. So they're really, um, they're really the type of people that when you're working with them in their direct sales business, give them all the links, give them all the backing, give them all the research, give them all the details that you can give them and let them go and come back to you. They need to process, they need to analyze. These are really hard things for me to share sometimes <laughs> or to do sometimes as it pertains to working with. I'm so attracted to a club because I crave organization and details. Angela, both Angela and Katina are high level clubs. And yes, they have other, I mean, we all have a, some of all of these cards in us. We all do. But we're, we have a predominant characteristic or predominant personality um, they you can't leave lingering questions and so that can be a really hard struggle when it comes to kids that are clubs they like to know why and yes more than the average two-year-old that's asking why every five seconds they really want to know why they really function on understanding and the way that you can motivate and encourage your club child is through giving them understanding and through uh, showing them ways that you can recognize them for their problem solving abilities and their organization. They're a lot more reserved. They can be a lot more laid back and they're very, they have very valuable traits to them. So that's a little bit more about the club. I'm sorry I confused it and was calling it a spade for a minute there in the beginning. If you, if you caught that, I, I'm sorry. Welcome everybody that's joining in. Hey, Benita. Okay, um, let's talk about the heart for a minute, okay? The heart is a relationship helper, okay? They are all about building long-term loyal relationships. They really have a hard time with rejection, much like the diamond, but even more so. They take things very personally. They are very motivated by who they can help, how they can help. They are the... <laughs> we want to know the whys and the details so we can solve the problems equals the club. Yes. <laughs> it's totally, it's totally true. Angela, if you have additional insights into how to motivate a club child or a club to take action, go ahead and fill me in as a personal club. This is from research through knowing what I know through experience that I've had, but I'm not personally one of them. So if I'm missing something, please chime in, let us know what can, we can learn. <laughs> The hearts are very loyal and honest though. They are nature's biggest BS sensor like alerters. They can just sense it from a mile away. They really have a hard time saying no and can get caught up into too many things and they don't like the word no themselves. They don't like hearing the word no. It can make them crumble and they don't say it because of that as, as well. So for motivating a heart, you want to show them how they can help. Show them the difference that their contributions make and how they can build and form relationships. So when you're working with them into your direct sales business and recruiting, 
you really want to highlight and focus the relationships that are built through the team and through the one-on-one -on -one contact with their clients and the people that they are they help through the product service or idea and then additionally the company mission whatever the mission is and the more closely loyal the heart is to that mission the more you're gonna have that hard worker for life that's why there's so much heart in me when it pertains to things like unique and women who have been you know widowed divorced abused uh, you name it there's there's a special extra heart pull in there for me and I can't say no to to that kind of thing they um, really really thrive in like that personal that personal one-on-one -on -one, that communication that they're lifelong friends and so they they will thrive in that uh, the kids that are hearts uh, they are the more sensitive ones they can tend to com come across as a little bit more of the dramatic ones at times not quite the same as the dramatic diamond but a little bit more like overly sensitive to things really motivating the heart as a child you know you really helped mommy today so much by doing a b c d and e i really appreciate how you helped with such and such like really specifically point out that that um like where and how it helped with a heart additionally to that hearts love to talk about their friends and their family so let the heart talk same with diamonds diamonds like to talk but they can they can run a room a little bit where you have the spades and the clubs that aren't so into talking they don't really need to talk so much the hearts and the diamonds the reds in the deck yeah they like to talk and let them talk let them know that you are truly interested and that you really care about them which all people want to know but especially to motivate and encourage that heart they need to see your genuine interest in them to be warm to you and to be uh, turned on to what you have to offer and that is so true for the child that's a heart and the adult that's a heart that you may be working with in the business sense all right and then we also have now we actually have the spade again I don't know where I got myself all spade spade club confused there for a second um, the spade is our result winning goal getter okay they can be driven a lot more by money they are driven by any opportunity that they have to win to lead and to be right um, I hated it when it was pointed out to me that I was this personality type a little bit more and I realized it's not you know it's funny how like we see ourselves versus how other people perceive and see us and it is all about the perception it is about understanding because sometimes spades are seen as just super bossy super selfish super whatever and they just see themselves as I don't got time for that and I'm going for it and that's because there's still so much diamond and heart in me that heart is the polar opposite of this spade like these guys are the polar opposite of each other hey hey howdy howdy um, but to communicate with these guys I mean these guys are awesome get it done people no nonsense get to the point let's generate the ideas they are big picture big result getters okay so to really motivate this spade recognize their excellent leadership abilities show them the compensation plan in your business they are going to want to know the details of how much money they can make how they're going to be recognized when they will be recognized what their goals are what the big picture is and help them in don't or don't tell them don't tell them what to do don't tell them how to do it um, you have to encourage motivate and guide them to do what they're going to do because they believe their way is right um, and th they want the win and they're motivated to get the win and they will find the win so get to the big picture first you really have to sandwich your critiques or your constructive thoughts to them um, <laughs> your kids are a heart and a spade and total opposites I can believe that I have I I definitely feel like I I have I have a strong I have my Jenna's a heart she's completely a heart and Benson is totally across in the um, diamond spade category himself 
he 100% is. He has to be right. He is a leader. He wants to win. He wants to know when he's going to be paid next for a job that he's doing and constantly negotiating that. He's always coming up with new ideas. That is Benson completely. Where Grady, he's stubborn, man, and he definitely has that like detailed mind. And yes, he's still only two, but you can just see the you, when you learn to recognize personality types, you learn to recognize it in the smallest of child all the way to the oldest of adult. And you can put little things into place to help you communicate with them better and help you motivate them better, not manipulate them, not try to trick them into taking action, but truly speaking to what's important to them. And again, it's not about becoming a chameleon to these personality types. Stay true to who you are, but you can work on improving and understanding how to interact and communicate more effectively. Communication skills are so important. The higher your personal development skills, the higher your people skills, your communication skills, the more successful you're going to be, the higher you're going to go in no matter what industry, no matter what career, no matter what, what you're in. These things work across all careers. They work from the fitness person to the makeup person to um, you know, hair salon, well, hair salon, makeup person, yeah, same thing. Um, crafting, um, why am I struggling to come up with different careers? I can only think of three off the top of my head here right now. It's getting late, what can I tell you? Um, but really understanding how to, how to interact with those different types and these people skills work in all of them, okay? Because we are so universal. And there are so many different ways of categorizing personality and I did post a video in here tonight which I was so blown away by um, at, our, at our Facebook group, if you're not already in it. Um, it was a TED Talk from Jamie Cohen and he talked about recognizing leadership in handwriting. And I was just shocked at when I read and listened and looked at my own handwriting to what he was saying, it was like, wow, like that's so, like I could see parts of that in me completely. And I'm like, I just want everybody to share that. And that's, you know, these have gone back, personality types have gone back to as early as 400 BC with what is it, Hippoc Hippocrates, I think, was the first to like really do a lot with the sanguine, the choleric, the, oh my gosh, why do I do this? Sanguine, choleric, melancholy, and phlegmatic for personality types, which we could name each one of the cards that as well. But I feel like they're harder names to remember, and I felt like it's just easier to think about life and going through things. You need all the cards to play the game. You need all the cards and all the personalities in your life. You have all of them in your life. And there are so many different um, players in the deck of cards. And I just thought it was a fun way to kind of look at it and to be a little bit more direct versus just calling you a color or calling you a sea urchin and an, or an animal or whatever. It was the fun way that I thought we could we could dive into it here at Life Above Rubies. So um, I hope that this little video helped you a little bit more further understand how to actually communicate, motivate, and encourage those different types. I know for me, um, I really wanted to learn it more even with my kids, like who they actually are and what actually will motivate them and how to speak to each one of them differently. and what will make them have fun versus what will make them crumble. Because if you don't recognize that club's need for detail on organization, that just completely destroys them. And you don't recognize their need for the clear, detailed picture, the, okay, what are we doing next, mommy? Um, and that detailed schedule of the day, like that's super hard for a diamond mom to give their club child. <laughs> it's super hard, right? Uh, versus, you know, the perhaps the spade dad who is really kind of that more workaholic driven go, 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 who has a heart daughter who is just crying out for uh, just let's sit down and talk and have a heart to heart conversation and let's help who can we help today you know and it's it's really interesting and I just I really am passionate about 
sharing this with you guys more. I really appreciate the opportunity to do so. Um, like I said, it's kind of funny when I didn't really realize how much of a need this would be here at Life Above Rubies to share some of these things. This was something that I was not forced, but I was, I taught back in the hair salon days, back in when I was 19, 20 years old, when I was manager of the hair salon. And uh, these lessons and traits and the four personalities have continued to come up even through training with Danny Johnson, training with Tony Robbins, and a little bit differently with each one. And even when I did my uh, AMTC, my Actors, Models, and Actor, Model, and Talent for Christ training, uh, the big part of their workshops and what they had you go through was personality training and understanding because without relationships, without understanding people further, you don't go very far in anything that you're after doing. So I hope this helps you and encourages you. Have an awesome, amazing night, and I'll see you guys again soon right here on Facebook and at lifeaboverubies.com. Bye-bye.